Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mordecai Rosen. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to CA World 2016. Uh, or at least my little section of CA World 2016. As you heard from the resounding voice behind the curtain, my name is Mordecai Rosen, and I'm the general manager of the security business here. To give you a little background on me, I've been in the biz security business for about 20 years, and I came into CA about 15 months ago with the acquisition of a company called Exedium, which is now our privilege access management company. So this is my second CA World. How many people in the audience have been to CA World before? Okay, so I don't know what you think, but I think this is a fantastic event. You know, we at CA get to engage with our customers and partners. You get to see our wares. And it's out of the norm normal business cycle as well. Like, you know, we're not trying to close a $20 million deal. We're not trying to figure out what the nuances of a particular deployment. So we have these conversations, you know, and I've had them over the course of the last couple of days with customers and partners that are strategic, great interactive dialogue about uh, how we can accomplish things together. So if you just walked out of uh, Mike Gregoire's keynote, you have some context on how CA is aligning the company uh, around the, this global business revolution and the massive digital transformation of our economy. I guess what I'd like to do this morning as GM of the security business is share some observations with you about how I think this tectonic shift affects security and uh, identity and access management, since as you know, that's the majority of our portfolio, give you a sense of how it's impacting our strategy and product portfolio, and then also kind of have a little bit of discussion of how we can work together as partners to help you uh, deliver on your digital initiatives. So this presentation will be a multimedia extravaganza. I'll, uh, I'll talk for a little bit, we'll have some videos. I'll be handing out some uh, customer awards later on. And we'll even have a customer come on stage and talk about how we work together on a critical uh, digital initiative of, of, of theirs. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have any astronauts uh, on the stage with, with me. I almost had a couple of WWE wrestlers, but apparently that, that didn't work out. Lawyers are an important part of our lives, and we pay homage to our general counsel's office in every presentation that we give, so we include this slide in every one of them. And if you could read the fine print, it would basically say that this presentation is for information purposes only. So disruption. We're all active participants in the big, biggest business revolution since the Industrial Revolution, and trillions of dollars are moving to new economy businesses. If you just take a look at the sharing economy, the social market, and digital manufacturing, there's a half a trillion dollars of impact in the next decade. So we recently ran a study of 1,700 globally, companies globally to see how this is impacting them and I think we expected this anecdotally, but we finally got data that says the majority of them, 80% or more, are knee deep in digital transformation. And it's not only on the commercial side, <clears throat> it's on government as well. Federal, state, and local are going through this incredible transformation because they're facing the largest shortage in talent in the last 100 years. 50% of government employees globally will retire in the next decade. So it's a call to action. These folks have to move quickly to start providing services more effectively through digital services. And we're gonna hear a lot more about that later on with a great customer of, a customer of ours from the state of Louisiana. So to quote a recent Nobel Prize winner and one of my all-time favorites, the times, they are a-changing. <clears throat> And so, as always, this sort of transformation disrupts and redefines IT. As I said, all of our customers are knee deep in digital transformation initiatives and accelerated pace. You know, during my travels, I'd have, I've had conversations with many of you and many others 
about your current digital initiatives. But when I kind of take them back, they all fall, fall into four critical categories to me. So the first is the digital marketplace. And this is really digitally engaging customers at every stage of the customer journey, from the way we initially market to them, to the way we tell them about our new products and services, to the way we transact business with them. Digital marketplaces are weaving security and identity by necessity into every link of the customer journey. The second is the digital workplace, empowering employees with new compelling personalized apps and making them as effective on the go in the field or some remote part of the planet as they are in the office. Uh, the third is the connected enterprise or the federated enterprise. It's opening up your enterprise to customers and employees at a, at a scale that we haven't done before to create a broad federated network and, and build a supply chain for ourselves. And finally, there's, uh, there's the Internet of Things. And there's this increasing demand, as we all know, to make widgets that are internet hot. And that comes from cars making friends on Facebook to vacuum cleaner robots tweeting on Twitter. We see these initiatives in full swing across our entire customer base. And it's even true for us inside of CA. We're knee deep in many of these digital initiatives as well. And at the core of all these initiatives are the requirement to manage identity and digital relationships at a scale that we haven't done before for customers, for employees, for partners, for applications, and for things. BMW never imagined they would run a car sharing service like Zipcar. Imagine a company like BMW managing digital subscribers at a scale that AT&T or Vodafone does. So our strategy is simply to harness the power of identity to enable IT and the lines of business to take back control, to provide a comprehensive identity platform that allows you to manage identities and digital relationships at scale. That is what is required for digital transformation. BT, formerly British Telecom, is a great exam example of needing to manage uh, digital identities and these digital relationships in vast numbers. Like most telcos, as fixed line and data services got commoditized, they started transforming, reaching out, and creating new uh, digital media services that were higher margin. And one of the ones that they just launched is called BT Sport, which was designed to compete with sports television and be a deep, immersive, rich online service. As you'll see in a second, this meant digitally engaging their customers in a way that they weren't used to doing. So let's hear from BT and get a sense of how important managing identity and digital relationships is to their new business. BT is one of the largest telecommunications companies in the world. We're the largest internet service provider in the UK, and we've recently launched BT Sport. BT.com and BT Sport have around 25 million accesses a day that are authenticated across 20 million identities. It has to be very efficient, very fast, and transparent to the user. We use CA managing many different users and authenticating them onto the right service in the right way. We want to make sure that when you access the services that you're looking for, you are assigned the right level of privilege based on who you are. So this is the sort of thing that we look to CA to do. The experience for our customers into those services is easy, is clean, is trusted and secure. And for that, we needed a partner who could deliver at scale and also could deliver a product that was really sound. So CA underpins our authentication for all our users. There's over 350 applications that are protected to ensure that there's no chance of any information being sent out. It shouldn't be. So therefore, we're seeing both application development savings, better experience for the user, and also real financial benefit in terms of efficiency. And CA is right at the heart of that. BT reckons it saves somewhere in the region of about four and a half million pounds a year through simplified administration. We had a lot of management overhead, a lot of complexity. That went away and we were able to streamline and provide a better experience ultimately for our customers.
So 20 million new digital customers, 25 million accesses per day, and this is just for one digital service family. So this is just one example of how the industry is harnessing identity to manage digital relationships at scale and how imperative it is. I want to paint a picture for you of where our portfolio is heading and the strategic imperatives that are driving it. There are three major pillars and, and a few minor pillars. The first pillar is around embracing SaaS and the hybrid cloud. Identity and access management is quickly moving to the cloud, and we are as well. But there's reasons to run in the cloud, there's reasons to run on-prem, and there's reasons to run hybrid. And our vision is to provide an identity and access management platform that allows you to take advantage of both and realize the advantages of running a hybrid environment. So imagine an identity as a service solution that also allows you to launch and provides access to your on-prem web applications from a single launch pad. I'm gonna be making a product announcement about this in a few minutes. The second pillar for us is enabling the developer through easy to use, easy to access APIs. The future of security is not each one of us reinventing identity and access management for every single platform that we have. Even though, you know, historically we've, we've seen that exactly. The future is agile, enabled APIs that can be incorporated in, into all your new compelling applications and, and allow you to build it into any piece of the value chain uh, you want. And I'll be showing you a demonstration of this a little later on as well. And the third pillar is leveraging behavioral analytics to protect our enterprises. Behavioral analytics is clearly critical to threat detection and mitigation and identity and access information is incredibly valuable in that respect. So accordingly, our strategy is to integrate behavioral, active behavioral analytics into our entire portfolio. But unlike other generic UBA products, our analytics engines will be tuned to identity and be active versus passive. That is, they'll not only detect anomalies or malicious anomalies, but they'll be able to trigger preventative action. And I'll be making our first product announcement about that in a few minutes as well. As I said, in CA Security, we embrace the new enterprise comprised of both cloud and on-prem infrastructure and applications. And we're maniacally focused on protecting it at the same time while unlocking its power. And the reason is simple, because it's the only enterprises that exist anymore. All of us, you, CA, we're moving to everything as a service as fast as we can eat it. Software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and now identity as a service. Hybrid is clearly the new normal, and the data supports this con conclusion. 80% of investments for the rest of the decade will wind up being in hybrid. More than 70% of existing, of existing global 500 companies will continue to use their mainframes, which is you know, good, good for us. Yeah. But the challenge in this new environment is that identity and access management now becomes fragmented, which makes it very, very difficult to manage. And you, as you can see here, the data also shows that there's the, the the folks out there struggle with uh, how, they, how they approach this, how they manage their new everything as a service environment. In CA Security, we plan to take on that challenge and provide identity and access management solutions that allow you to bridge the gap between on-prem and cloud. We plan to embrace the hybrid enterprise by design. So here's our first product announcement of the day. I am very pleased to announce CA Identity Service, our brand new and exciting identity as a service solution. CA Identity Service delivers a secure consumer grade workspace that provides access to both SaaS and on-prem applications from a single launch pad. And unlike other IDAS solutions, it provides you deep user provisioning, federated single sign-on, identity lifecycle management, 
and even rogue account discovery in a single solution. If you are a SaaS only customer, if those are the only kind of applications that you have, then you can use CA Identity Service as a standalone IDAS solution with its supported hundreds of applications. If you're a CA single sign-on customer, there's something particularly compelling here, and this, is, this, will, this will demonstrate part of our hybrid story. It is pre-integrated out, out of the box with CA SSO. That is, that you can not only launch SaaS apps from CA Identity Service, but you can launch your CA SSO protected apps from CA Identity Service from the same launch pad. And your CA SSO protected applications and their associated user identities are auto-discovered and synchronized to CA Identity Service on the fly. We have a short demo, let's take a look. CA Identity Service. And this is just our first step in creating an entire IAM as a service platform uh, in the cloud. So you can get your hands on this right away. Go to CAA.com, register, you can get a tenant, you can start typing and give it a try. And again, it's a full featured IDAS solution. And for our existing CA SSO customers, it's a bridge between where you are to IDAS in this unbelievably integrated way, there's no reason to look at another IDES solution because nobody else has that capability. Oops. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's go. Okay, on to the second pillar, after a short diversion. Uh, APIs, the way we create software has changed and changed dramatically. API enabling every, everything is the way to uh, unleash the cre creativity in your organization. So today when we deliver packaged software, even when it's incredibly easy to use with a compelling user interface, what we're doing is making you more productive making you more efficient, letting you do your job, and that makes sense. It, 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 has, it has incredible value and we'll continue to do that. But when we also deliver the same software to you that's API enabled, now we allow you to innovate. And that makes you much more powerful. So a key strategic pillar for us is API enabling our entire portfolio so that you can build applications on top of CA security using our platform. And that allows you to build whatever app you want, leverage security and identity and access management as an underlying foundational component, and that makes you much more productive. Talking about it isn't as cool as seeing it, or in this case, you'll see in a second, hearing it. Uh, the demo wizards have been at work, <clears throat> and we have a demonstration that leverages the APIs in the new CA identity service that I just announced. We took an AI-driven chatbot service, glued it to the APIs of our CA identity service so we could extend the administrative interface to be voice activated. So conceptually, we hooked up Alexa from Amazon Echo to CA identity service so that when you want to onboard a new user, all you've got to do is ask and she'll get it done. So let's uh, send in the chatbots. 
Hi, this is the CA Security Help Desk. How can I help you? We hired a new employee today. Would you like to onboard the user into the organization? Yes. Please give me the person's first and last name. Arthur Dent. Yeah. Confirm, you would like to create an account for Arthur exactly Dent. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. User Arthur Dent was created with the user ID ADENT03. <clears throat> Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay, so obviously that was for demo purposes only, but I think it effectively demonstrates what's possible when you API enable your uh, foundational components. So you can see this demonstrated in the demo area. I encourage you to, to, to go check it out. But I also want somebody in this audience to do me a favor. Are there any college basketball fans in this audience? Who is the coach of the Duke Blue Devils? What's his name? Mike Shashevsky, spelled K-R-Z-Y-Z-E-W-S-K-I. Somebody has to go to the demo area and see if you can get Shashevsky's name in our identity database. And if we see flames and cloud, clouds of smoke coming up, we'll know that somebody actually tried. <clears throat> so on to analytics. The one thing all security professionals know is that our attack surface has significantly increased. This October, we all experienced an unprecedented attack that interrupts, uh, interrupted services across the whole internet. And it was driven by a piece of malware that hijacked DVRs and cameras that had weak credentials or hard-coded credentials, orchestrated a botnet army, and launched a DDoS attack. So the data on this chart is from the Verizon Data Breach Report. And it confirms that compromised credentials and privilege ex escalation are used in most successful uh, attacks. So in this new world where breach is the rule and not the exception, and our identities and our accounts are subject to this kind of compromise, we need to look at identity and authentication with a different lens. In this new world, we need to see identity as not only just who you are, but what you do. And authentication not just being an event, but a continuous process. One technology that we know is very, very capable in this area is behavioral analytics. So here's product announcement number two. I am very pleased to announce CA Threat Analytics, our new active behavioral analytics product. In the initial release, we focused it on privilege access management to help detect and mitigate privilege user escalation. But we plan to roll it out across our entire portfolio. The, the product itself is leveraging the core analytics technology of our payment services fraud detection engine, which today does real-time risk analytics on a billion credit card transactions a year. It is self-learning, it is self-tuning, and it is very, very capable in distinguishing the difference between normal benign behavior and abnormal, anomalous, malicious behavior. But here's the really interesting part. That CA threat analytics for PAM doesn't only detect anomalies, but it can trigger protective events. So like in most systems, it'll, it can wind up alerting you. But in CA threat analytics for PAM, we can wind up triggering, initiating a session recording on an active session in process. We can wind up dynamically forcing a reauthentication of a privileged session in process, or we can terminate a session. And in conjunction with CA PAM and CA Identity Suite, which is our identity management and governance product, you can suspend an account on the fly by changing its password and scheduling 
a review of the account. No other vendor has an integrated embedded behavioral analytics product that does this thing. Let's take a sneak peek at CA Threat Analytics for Pam. CA Threat Analytics for Pam. <clears throat> We're very proud, very excited about this product. I encourage you to go check it out in the demo area. I think you'll be impressed. So I said we had three major pillars, but we also, like every development organization, have minor pillars as well. And one of our areas of focus across the entire portfolio is to simplify and streamline our products to make them easier to use, easier to access, and easier to deploy with much better time to value for, for you, our customers. And a great example of this is our new the new release of our Identity Suite product. I think it highlights this in spades. So you know, managing user access and associate, associated entitlements can be complicated. So in this new release of Identity Suite, we've significantly enhanced the user experience to make it much more intuitive, almost shopping cart-like, to simplify the process. We've also provided the same user experience through a mobile interface so you can manage identity on the run. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we've reduced the time to deployment from days to less than 10 minutes. And with our new pre-templated workflow, which is a new and unique feature called Deployment Express, and our virtual appliance, we now save you weeks of time over the competition in deployment and configuration. Please, please check out the new release of Identity Suite. I think you will be remarkably impressed. I'm remarkably impressed. <clears throat> Everything I've talked about so far is delivered through our trusted digital relationship platform. So our strategy is to provide a modular yet integrated platform that lets you start with a single component, whatever identity and access component service you may need for a particular digital initiative. And as you require more capability, add on with the knowledge that these components are integrated so that one plus one equals at least two and a half. So it starts with, in, in our portfolio, it starts with identity management and governance. IT needs to manage the identity lifecycle of employees and ensure appropriate entitlements. The lines of business need to manage the identities of customers. And both need to manage costs by enabling self-service of profiles and password resets and even some level of governance. We then provide risk-based authentication that leverages context to make authentication frictionless for no and good sessions and employ step-up authentication for suspect sessions. And once authenticated, we simplify the user experience by enabling single sign-on for both SaaS apps 
and on-prem apps, and provide federation so that you can provide access to partners and customers alike and build out your, uh, your federated network. Then we provide mobile and API access for those of you who are developing, like all of us are, developing uh, mo new mobile applications for our customers. And as we, we discussed, given that privilege escalation is a major attack vector, we provide a comprehensive privilege access manager to secure both cloud and on-prem infrastructure. And finally, all of this, all of its wrap with embedded active behavioral analytics that allow us to leverage the identity and access information we have to better protect your enterprises. So while we are clearly proud of our technology and we are want to talk about it more than we probably should, I want to take a moment to recognize our partners as well and what role they play in delivering customer success. One of our closest partners is HPE. We've been partners with HPE for a number of years and security is one of the pillars of that partnership from our mainframe software to our comprehensive identity and access management portfolio. And since we've worked together for a long time, we have a long list of uh, joint successes together. Just to highlight a few, CIBC used CA security products to allow them to shift their application workloads into HPE's virtual private cloud. In APJ, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, leveraged CA security products to protect their payment services. And the list goes on all enterprise-wide deployment of our identity and access management portfolio. So Art Wong is the uh, SVP and GM of HP's security business. And he couldn't be here today, he wanted to be, but he uh, unfortunately had his sales kickoff event in London this week, but he was kind enough uh, to record a video and share a few words with you about what it's like to partner with CA. Hi, I'm Art Wong, Senior Vice President and General Manager of HPE Enterprise Security Services. Like CA Technologies, HPE is focused on helping our customers in a rapidly changing security environment driven by the digital economy. Technology and business decisions are being made every day in every enterprise. Partnerships are essential to us and our ability to provide solutions to address the business challenges our customers are facing. HP is focused on addressing the critical people, process, and technology needs facing our customers today and in the future. Our customers depend on us to protect their digital enterprise, to build digital resilience, and to use security as an enabler of their digital transformation and business objectives. We've always had a strong history of partnering together, and now HPE and CA are building and delivering new and differentiated solutions that provide greater value to meet the needs of the digital enterprise. CA's unique security portfolio will significantly enhance HPE solutions that we take to market in order to protect enterprises. These solutions can be delivered to our customers directly on-premise or consumed as a service through HPE security services. No other partnership can offer such a complete integrated set of solutions that meet the highest identity and access management demands of enterprises. This partnership will position both of our companies to deliver successful business outcomes to our combined customers. Now, I really wish I could be there with you in person to share in the excitement, but I hope that all of you have a great event and enjoy CA World 2016. Thanks very much. Thank you, Art Wong. Thank you, HPE. <laughs> HPE, as I said, is a fantastic partner of ours, but they're not our only partner. We have a bunch of security partners here at the show, and I encourage you to engage with them. They have a wealth of knowledge. They know a ton about our products. They know how to deploy, and they know a lot about the industry. If you need help connecting up or you're interested, reach out to me or my team, and we'll wind up hooking you up. So it's time to hear from a real customer. Digital marketplaces are not just a commercial phenomenon. In fact, governments are adopting the exact same model to provide citizen services. Like many states, the state of Louisiana is modernizing to become a digital government. I'm going to ask Matt Vince, Chief Design Officer for the state of Louisiana, 
to join me on stage. Matt, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. So this is your first CA world, right? First CA world, okay. yeah. Having, having a good time so far. <laughs> what, like, what do you think? It's... I think it's awesome. This is a great forum. And... <laughs> Wonderful. So that was my first impression. Like the first time I came here, I was just blown away by how cool it is. Yeah, it's great. So Chief Design Officer, a bit of an unusual title. <laughs> what does Chief Design Officer at the state of Louisiana do uh, for a living? So as Chief Design Officer, I'm in charge of looking at the entire portfolio of everything the state of Louisiana does, from uh, tax to healthcare to social services, public safety. We have a lot going on in the state of Louisiana. So my job is to take a look at all the future modernizations, how, how we design these new systems to work together in a way to bring a common architecture and a common experience for our customers and for our citizens. So I know that you've been embroiled kind of at the tail end of a two-year project, your own digital transformation project yes. as it relates to, to Medicare and Medicaid. Can you tell us a little bit about what the project was, maybe kind of give us the arc of the project and what you were trying to accomplish. Sure, so the Medicaid project's really our first big initiative in this whole shared services and, and really pillar services design we're doing. So we took a large system, an eligibility and enrollment system. It's the, the citizen portal for people coming to receive Medicaid benefits. It touches about one and a half of our 4.6 million citizens. So we decided to use this platform, this system, as really the platform to start designing in a way where we talk about shared services, the API-enabled world that totally fits in with the design we're taking with Medicaid. So a million and a half citizens, I imagine identity and access management must have played a role in this platform. Is that, is that the case and how did you guys wind up using it? That is absolutely the case. So uh, we have a couple of what we call core services the IAM SSO is really the core of the core services. It's going to be the real gateway into how we start to build these systems together. It's the, the common system. We want you know, the single sign-on experience for our citizens. We don't want them to have to go through hundreds of different authentication schemes, several accounts. You know, we should have the same account if you go to register for your car, a hunting license, or pay your taxes. You should have the same experience as a customer. But you actually did something unique here. You just didn't solve this Medicare, Medicaid problem. You built a platform that was more scalable, more flexible than that, so you could expand it horizontally across the other agencies, isn't that right? Yes, and that's kind of our, our vision here. We're, you know, the state of Louisiana, as most states do, we have a, a difficult procurement process. By the time we get a system in place, we're usually years behind where we should be. So we're taking a, a view of designing the systems of the future, not the ones of today. And so part of that is really taking a look at service-oriented design, tying these systems together. Medicaid is that, that first, what we call our anchor tenant here, but it's certainly the platform we intend to use for all of our future design. So our, our CEO calls that skating to where the puck is going to be, but our CEO is Canadian. He also calls process, process. And, and, Anyway, if you could just hang up on me, uh, hang up with me on stage for uh, one more minute. Sure. Now it's time for me to uh, hand out some awards to some very special customers. Can we get the folks from Earthlink and Best Western on stage to join me as well? And the hey, hi. Yeah. Hi there. How are you? Hi. Hi. Nice. Good to see you. Brian. So, so every year uh, we get to hand out awards to cele celebrate innovation, and we call those awards the VIP awards for uh, vision, impact, and progress. And today I am honored to recognize three of our customers. For vision, I want to recognize the state of Louisiana. As you just heard, they use CA identity products to transform an outdated Medicare Medicaid enrollment system and create a shared service to be consumed by the re rest of the agencies. We extend this award to recognize your vision and pioneering spirit. Congratulations. Thank you. For impact, I want to recognize Earthlink. For those of you who don't know, Earthlink was, is a network service provider to over 750,000 customers. Earthlink deployed CA PAM in record time Earthlink went from procurement to enterprise-wide deployment 
in 30 days. So I am delighted to give Earthlink the award for the highest impact. Congratulations. And finally, for progress, uh, I want to recognize Best Western. At, after successfully leveraging our products for their digital workplace initiative, they turn toward our products again to secure the 25 million identities of their award-winning rewards program. So I am delighted to extend this year's VIP winner for progress to Best Western. Everybody, let's hear it for this year's VIP award winners. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Congratulations. It's been a journey. So what all these customer stories demonstrate is that security and identity access management can have dramatic business impacts, impacts on business outcomes. In our global study, there was some particularly compelling evidence that this was true. So you can see from these stats that over 50% of the customers and folks that implemented advanced identity and access management capability saw increased growth, saw increased productivity, and saw increased customer satisfaction. And these results aren't isolated. The market uptake in identity and access management is growing significantly. So if, if you're a, an existing CA customer or new to CA security, we'd love to engage with you and talk to you about these stories and how we can work together to accelerate your digital initiatives. As I said before, uh, seeing is believing. I'd like you all to f spend some time in our demo area. Like I said, the demo wizards behind the scenes have been hard at work to create something that I think you'll find immersive, compelling, and at the same time, uh, thought-provoking. You'll see all of our products integrated together in full exhibition, integrated together by APIs, by the way. And I think you'll have a really good experience and fun experience doing it. On your CA Pass, there's a QR code that will allow you to participate. So walk over there after this session and uh, step into uh, the future of identity and access management. And if you want to learn more about the topics I've been talking about today, there are three sessions you sh definitely shouldn't miss. The first one is John Grimm from Verizon doing a double click on the Verizon Data Breach Report, which will be really interesting. And the other two sessions are deep dives and drill downs on the two brand new products we announced today, CA Threat Analytics for PAM and CA Identity Service. So I encourage you to, to jump in and see these sessions. I think they'll be valuable. So we come to the close of our little fireside uh, chat today. Just to reinforce, our goal is to harness the, uh, the power of identity to help you secure and enable your digital transformation initiatives and do that by providing a comprehensive identity portfolio that lets you manage identity and digital relationships at scale. That is what we are maniacally focused on. So I want to thank you for attending my session. I'm honored to have you here. I look forward to meeting all of you over the course of, of the next two days. And if my schedule is a predictor, I am meeting all of you over the next two days. So thank you very much, and enjoy CA World 2016.